We're going to walk through a JUnit test now that can programmatically send HTTP requests to our servlet to test it. And the goal of this is to be able to understand how we programmatically create HTTP requests. So we're going to use a particular library called the Apache Commons HTTP client. Now, what we're going to be doing is we have our JUnit test. And what it's going to do is it's going to use the Apache HTTP client to programmatically send HTTP requests to our web container that we've got, which is going to be running our servlet. So our video servlet is going to be sitting inside of this. And we are not using the built-in Java URL anymore to open a connection and send a GET request. We're going to use the much more sophisticated uh, HTTP client library. Now, the HTTP client is included on the Android, although it's no longer actively being developed by the Android team. You can still include it in your own uh, Android applications and use the latest version provided by Apache. But we're actually going to use an even more advanced and robust way of sending requests later. So you can learn how the HTTP client works now if you want to to understand how these things work under the hood. Or you can wait and learn about retrofit, which is what we're going to be using later to send requests in a more type safe way. But what we're going to do is we're going to send HTTP requests to add a video. And then we're going to get the video list so that we can check in JUnit and see if the video was added to that list as we would expect. So let's dive in here and look at the test. If you'll go to the source test Java package of this project, or sorry, folder of this project, and then look underneath it in the video servlet HTTP test, we've got a standard JUnit test here. And just like we did when we were testing our simple servlet before is we've got a URL that expects for this particular uh, servlet to already be running in a web container on localhost, port 8080, and then mapped to slash video, but with the project name first. So just like before, you could go and launch this project by right-clicking on the build.gradle, going to task quick launcher, and then using Jetty Run to run this. But I'm going to skip that for now. The next thing is where things start to get a little more interesting is we're using the HTTP client library. And so what we're doing is we're actually creating an HTTP client, which is a fake browser. It's essentially a browser that we can control programmatically. Uh, more specifically, it's a library that we can use to programmatically generate HTTP requests that are going to be sent to the servlet. So we create our HTTP client library up top, and then if we scroll down a little bit, we see that we're going to start doing some actual work. <clears throat> so the test video add and list method is the test that I was describing where we're going to add a video, and then we're going to test that it's actually in the list when we go and retrieve through a GET request the list of videos on the server. The first thing we're going to do is create a semi-random video that we can send to the server, and then check that it actually ends up in the list that the server provides back to us later. Now, one of the interesting things to note is we need a way to make sure that the server is adding our video to the list. And so we're going to create a random, universally unique identifier, or UUID, using the Java UUID uh, uh, class. So we'll create a random, unique ID that we know the server has never seen before. And then we're going to build the name or title of our video using this unique ID and the URL using this unique ID. The next thing we have to do is we have to construct the post request that we're going to send to the server using our title, video, URL, and duration. So this create video post request method is a helper method that we've defined because we need to be able to take these parameters regarding the video and encode them into the HTTP request body. So we're going to use the HTTP client library to help us automatically encode those, those key value pairs for the name of the video, the duration, the URL into the body of the HTTP request. 
So the first thing we do to do this is we have to create our HTTP POST object on the URL that we're going to send to. And then we create a series of name value pairs representing the keys such as name and the values that we want to provide for those, the URL and the video URL, et cetera. And then we use the HTTP client library to URL encode this data into a body that we can attach to the post. So we're creating the post, creating the, the data as key value pairs that we want to send to the server, URL encoding it into the body, and then attaching it to the post request. So if we scroll back up, we can see that we're getting our post request out of this method, and it's ready to be sent to the server. The next line is where we actually go and send the request to the server. So HTTP client.execute is actually constructing an HTTP request that is based on our HTTP POST object. So the HTTP client is going to send the actual HTTP POST request that we've specified to the server and then give us the response back as an object. And the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the server actually produced uh, the, the right action, that it, some, nothing went wrong and that we got a 200 response code indicating that everything's OK. So we quickly check the response code that we are getting back from the uh, server. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually go and extract the body of the response that we're getting as a string. And this is very similar to before. You can dive into the details of this if you want. But we're basically going and getting an input stream from the body and converting it to a string like we did with this simple servlet. Once we've gotten the body out, we want to make sure that the body matches the message that we're expecting. So our video servlet defines this video added message, which is sort of like a little, little indicator that everything went, went well on the server. And we provide that back in the response body. So we're going to just check that the response body is what we expect it to be. So at this point, what we've done is we've actually, through this code above, we've actually gone and added the video, hopefully, to the list on the server. So now what we want to do is get the list from the server. So we're going to construct a get request using the client HTTP client library. And we're going to execute that get request to get a response object like we did before. And then again, we're going to check that the status code is 200 because we want everything to have worked properly on the server. We don't want to continue on if some error went wrong. We only want to check things to make sure that we got the right response code first. We then extract the response body as a string again. And this is where we can do a little bit of interesting work. Because we generated a video that had a unique ID, we can create a string um, of what we expect that video's entry in the list to look like. And then down at the bottom, we can search the list, which is what we got in the response body. So when we extracted the response body up here, that was actually the list, the plain text list of videos that the servlet sent back. So we can just do some string work to ask if the list of videos contains the entry or the string that we would expect to see for our particular video. And if it does, then we know everything worked correctly. So this is a simple example of how to construct a HTTP request using the HTTP client library to create post requests, to get the responses back, and to actually execute them with the clients. You can use this uh, if you want to, or you'll learn more about Retrofit later on, and you can use Retrofit to send your requests.